All right, we're here. We're we're finally making a tier list, but it's not just right, another gosh. tier list. It's a Doom Guy tier list. <laughs> yeah, we're doing the time honored tradition of content creators across all platforms and making a tier list. But you know, you guys have seen enough tier lists. I don't think you guys need to see another version of Commandos somewhere near the top. Uh, you know, Warp Coven scattered across there. Who needs that? That's not fun. Jason's been out here talking about the Doom Guy for like half a year. So it's time for us to put him at the tippity top of this ridiculous pyramid. Smack dab on top. I think that's the Warhammer community post. Yeah, I think that we can. Uh, I think we can just. So jump for anyone who doesn't know, we know, he's not. This is a the Doom asking. guy. If you put ten points of equipment on the Intercessor Sergeant with a power sword, he can double shoot. He's got a four five P one lethal five bolter. So he's, he's on twos. Casually killing almost everything. Hits on twos. And generally, you have a reroll some devastator or tactical doctrine. <clears throat> yep, and we'll because you have the aspects. Yeah, you've got an aspect, so if anyone tries to use Obscurity, you just nuke them anyways. And then it also synergizes with your attack ops, because you, you take Champion of Humanity, and he just always is going to get more kills than everyone else in the game, so also two free victory points. What a Doom guy. Yeah, I think at LVO, you managed to kill, like, three or four operatives at least every game over the nine rounds? Yeah, he, like, he did roughly kill 50% of everything I came across. Yeah. So if anyone is looking for a silly meme that actually works pretty well, that would be the one that we'd suggest. And because he's the top of the list, he's our S tier Doom guy. Maybe you can change the S. You can click on the S and just rename it Doom guy too. Oh, I can. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, while doing a little Doom bit of research guy. for this tier list, I think we had the Grey Knight Doom guy pretty high up as well. He might not have the durability of everyone else, but he does sport. A two up save, four or five damage, and relentless uh, bolters. So you can drop hexagramic ward, giving him a or blocking psychic powers, true silver armor for a two up save, cybolt ammunition to push you up to four or five damage, and then a sanctic blessing to give yourself a free manifest psychic power. Or you can switch out the hexagramic ward <coughs> and the sanctic blessing for a purity seal for your melee. Yeah, I think, and like the free cast is is really strong because you can use it for no cover. You can use it for plus one damage. You can like pair that with a power sword so that um, he's four seven. And you can just yeah. Like so I think he kills. he ends up being a pretty solid guy. So for anyone who doesn't know, he'll have twelve wounds. He's got a four or five uh, pair of weapons, a four or five bolter with relentless, which is pretty strong. And then your psychic powers let you go up to an extra pip of damage, no cover. Uh, I don't think you can set yourself to a one-up save, though. I don't think so, either. Because ones are always fails. Yeah, and, like, you know, the other synergy on the team, uh, he can super conceal, you can give him a 10-inch charge. Um, he can fight twice and or shoot twice, and really just, like, hit like a truck with either one. Um, he has less durability, he doesn't ignore obscuring, and just, like, the overall context of the team isn't as good. Um, he synergizes decently well with the Seek and Destroy... Um, because you could make him like the executioner or something, but that's just like a, a mediocre tack up in the first place. So I think, yeah. like, it, it's arguable that he could be like on the same level up here, um, in like the context of Doom guys, because he really does super. He does hit a lot slay. of the notes. He's just really good at everything, and because you have all these other powers, you can make him do a lot more. It's just way less likely that the rest of the team is going to carry the deficiencies of eleven wound marines. Yeah, as a Doom guy himself, I think he makes the cut, but the rest of his team just kind of brings him down so that even if he does make it into, like, full-blown, yes, this is Doom guy territory, it's he's below the Intercessors just because the Intercessors can actually compete. Yeah, I think one of the other ones that is pretty high up on the Doom guy, maybe a, just a Doom dude, would be the Tyranid Warrior, right? He's one of the other ones that we could definitely bring up into that status, the vaunted status. Yes, you can just like fully load a Tyranid Warrior, so you've got like a bunch of extra attacks, your opponent has less attacks, and you're just an 18 wound monster. Um, d uh, can he also heal when he kills people, or is that only for the Gene Stealers? Yeah, so the Tyranid Warriors can be equipped with 
all of the different equipment. So feeder tendrils means that when your 19 wound leader with five attacks that reduces your opponent's melee attacks by one gets into combat and kills someone, he regains D3 lost wounds. You can give him adrenal glands, so he's moving an extra inch. So he's got the same 10 inch threat bubble on a charge. He can have extended chitin, which will give him a defensive reroll. He can have toxin sacks, which gives you uh, crits when you when you hit a crit, you can reroll one of your fails into a normal hit. And because you have power swords, it means that basically arbitrarily going to deal basically a jillion damage. And you can also switch this up. And instead of having your leader be a, um, a pure melee operative, you can give him an actual gun. Yeah. So he can be a three their, APL. Their shooting profiles are pretty strong. Yeah, the, the big problem for him is that he, you know, their profiles are good, but you're giving up a strong amount of, like, melee. But you could take, I think you could take a Death Spitter here. Let me see the actual loadouts for the Tyranid Warrior Leader. Yeah, I think, I mean, like, honestly, as, as like, a Doom guy alone, since you can get him up to 3 APL, um, between the Warrior and the Gene Stealer, he might be up there still, maybe in the Doom Guy territory. Um, they're not gonna, uh, maybe not, because they, they're not gonna kill as much just because of the action restriction. Like you can't double fight and you can't double shoot, but you can really like get there and mess people up. So I think he does kind of live in, in Doom Dude territory. Yeah, because he can't get the do can't do the double fight or the double shoot. He's only going to be he's his best turns are going to be when you spend the CP to get the third APL to charge, fight, shoot, or some version of those things. The good thing is that you can give him an actual gun and then take the Scything Talons. Um, or you could, t you could take the Lash Whip Bone Sword, which gives you both a Power Sword and the minus one attack, which is cool. So you can be pretty solid in melee, but you're only, you only have four attacks in, um, in melee. And then you have a Death Spitter, which is five attacks on threes, four, five. So you can do a pretty good simulation. It's just that you're never an actually three APL operative and you're never actually doing double fights or double shoots. So you can get bogged down a lot easier than some of these other Doom guys. So he's just a Doom dude. Yeah, like he, he he looks cool. Uh he fights well. He'll kill he'll absolutely slay like two targets per game. Easily. But yeah. Just because your your range output is not quite as consistent, it's not gonna do nearly as much. Uh for an example <coughs> of just like a normal Doomer Doom guy, we've got the El Elucidian Star Striders. You have infinite equipment points because you can take 16 but the best you can do is turn one of your veteran guard dorks into a scion dork so you go from fives to fours on everything and you go from las guns to bolters Star so Striders, that would be where like are you uh i believe oh, oh she's not there there she is yeah just a, a c like just just a guy you take your dude and instead of being anywhere cool he's just just it's a, a doom dork it just goes from dork. being a total goon into, like, selfishly taking all of the equipment and not really getting a lot done with it. Yeah. I think just above Doom Dorks is probably something like the Hand of the Archon. Hand of the Archon end up being able to take a lot of equipment, and it does push one of your operatives to being a pretty solid operative. You get an extra attack in melee, you get lethal 5 on that melee, and you can snare people so they get stuck in melee with you. And you can give an upgrade to your guns, so you can do extra normal damage on it. So you've got like a 3-4 bolter with, uh, with, what is it, lethal 5. Basically, you have like lethal 5 across all of, your, all of your weapon profiles. You shoot well, you fight well, and you can lock people in melee. And you have a 6-up field no pain. Does that include the banner? So you count as one higher? Uh, I don't think you can put the banner... Well, maybe you can. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Oh yeah, and you can take the banner and the phantasm grenade launcher. So you can like run up in the melee, nuke a couple dudes, drop their APL, stand on an objective, and do all this stuff. But like, it's not like it, you could do it. You could have put it all on a flare. Actually, you could put a lot of this on a flare. Uh, but the problem is the array of blades upgrade is only for the dorks. So you're only ever going up to four attacks with Handy the Archon. Yeah, it's it's like if you really really stack it here, you're not really getting that much more than just your other operatives can do. So you but know, it's like you can fully stack someone, and it does make him more helpful. It's just like you know, obviously, he's not on the same caliber as like the intercessor sergeant or the the gray knight doom guy. 
Yeah, but this is clearly a step above something like the Star Striders, where you're pushing a normal dude, or you're pushing a, a less than normal dude to a completely normal dude. So it's a, a Doom man. Um, the an man. example of the lack of Doom, basically no interesting power ups, be probably something like the Pathfinders, where all of your equipment are just upgrading your future shooting attacks, but nothing is affecting your current shooting attack or your movement or anything. So there's just not really that much juice to squeeze on the Doom Guy Lemonade. Yeah, just a bunch of laser beams that aren't are harmless until they, you know, it's it, marker lights. It's just, it's a cool light show. I think Corsair Voids card are also, I but we could talk a little bit about all of the things that basically don't do anything, but I think that's less interesting than some of the interesting ones. Like, we were looking at it yesterday, and... Just generic Chaos Space Marines definitely have a Doom guy. Yeah, and they've got a couple of options even. Like the generic, just like the Compendium Chaos Space Marines. I don't know if there's... Oh, maybe that's this one? Yeah, it's, that's him. He actually is probably right up there with like, uh, at least as good as the Tyranid Warrior, if not a little bit better. I think he is a little bit better because you also have the... Because you have access to fight twice and he natively has three APL. Yeah, um, so for anyone who doesn't know... You can take a Grizzly Trophy, which is a Grizzly Trophy just like Legionary get. You can have a Sacrificial Dagger, so if he kills someone, he heals for four, eight, 4 health. He can get a Dark Blessing, so he gets one extra melee attack. And then he can have Malefic Rounds to have P1 on his Bolter, on his Bolt Pistol, and then he can also get Ceaseless on his Bolt Pistol. So you can have a Chaos Space Marine Leader with five attacks with whichever or six attacks with whichever power weapon you want you can have a power fist or a power weapon at six attacks on twos twos and threes uh threes for the fist and twos for the sword you heal on kill similarly to the uh the big guys and instead of using a plasma pistol you could double shoot with your p145 bolt gun which it hits on probably isn't as good once. as a yeah it might not be as good as plasma pistols in terms of like single target damage but because you can double fire it, that does mean that you can have more room to actually do stuff. And you can actually do it with a... Maybe you can't do it with a bolt gun, let's see. I think the odds of the of a bolt pistol that's P1 hitting on twos, rerolling ones of killing just like a regular goon is actually surprisingly high. Yeah, so I think it's just a, a fun spot for you, for people who want to try a little bit of a... An off-meta pick because part of the fun things for Chaos Astartes is you can also take a bunch of goons. Cultists. You take three Space Marines and then you just take eight dorks. And you can like scout to play your cultists like um, like sneaky git style. Yeah, I don't think they're particularly good just because like the the raw stats of the Legionary definitely push you up there. And losing some of the stats does hurt. And being at thirteen wounds versus you know the intercessions fourteen or fifteen does hurt. But if you do want a little bit of an off meta thing and you want six attacks on twos for doom doom guy running around 13 wounds and healing when you kill people he's like he's right up there with intercession durability yeah i think it's funny though because it doesn't compare that fair i mean it compares favorably to the legionary just because going up to six attacks means that you were like trivializing some of the fights so as long as you can keep him alive and get the first heal he can definitely run around and do a little bit more after that yeah, I think he's got some potential to stick around and, you know, participate in the whole game. <coughs> um, some other ones that we looked at that didn't really seem to do that much. Felgor are, there's like not a lot of doom. You know, you just smear war paint on them, but none of the other equipment really help you do anything fun. <laughs> if I remember correctly. Blooded are the perfect example of just a doom dork basically you get a bunch of defensive things you can add an extra attack in melee kind of like the hand of the archon but because your base profile is so like mid you're not really getting all that much out of it you do do it all the time like you take the armor plates and the beast pelts and the trophies and the wicked blades on dudes and stacking them all into one guy just gives your normal dork uh extra normal damage so he's doing three three normal damage he debuffs your opponent's number of attacks which is good so he wins combat a little bit more efficiently and if you get shot you reroll ones 
but like eh. it still is like a bolt gun's just gonna kill him and if he tries to fight or shoot <clears throat> anyone he's gonna <clears throat> die maybe I don't die know. horribly Farstalker kin band are another group that have basically just a, a doom a doomsman basically wait did we decide on doomsman or dooms dork for blooded I think for the blooded he's a doom dork yeah, I think so, He's too. He's getting, like, a perfectly average profile. And then the Farstalkers are definitely better than a Doom Dork, just because you get the two different shooting profiles. So if you're running around and you've got AP1 or Lethal 5 Stun on demand, that's pretty nice. And then you can do Meat and Trophies. And the cool thing about the Kroot is you can have two of these guys. One of them is like your actual guy that you equipped. And then the other one would just be your uh, cold blooded. Who's like your experienced operative who gets to do this also. So you can put two toxins, like a toxin shot, a piercing shot, meat and trophy on a guy and have a three APL crew that pops out of cover with the fourth attack from cutthroats for a turn. He like kills a dude, pops out, piercing shot someone. And that's cool. And you could do it twice. Yeah. You can you can kind of hit. Um, I th- he might actually be ahead of the hand of the archon for me. Yeah, I mean he's he's not amazing, but you can load him up and he can do some stuff, which is kind of the idea of a, of the doom guy. Um, yeah, and then there's plenty of teams. Like I don't think there's any way to like single handedly stack any of the demons because like any of them, no, the- none of them you can even spend ten equipment points on. No, you can put about half of your equipment points on one or two dudes, but because everyone, there's only two equipment types per skew and you can't mix anything, the most you can ever have is like a third of your team's points on one guy. Yeah, and like Compendium Guard, I don't think you can really like stack anything up there. It's like you could give someone double grenades and that doesn't really count. And like a combat knife and a medic and he's, I don't know, he's like the worst yeah, you of can the give, You can have a you single guard. Stack you can have a yeah, you can have a single guardsman with a four up save and a regimental standard and a medikit. But he's he's even worse than a doom door because then you you don't even he's like a he's like a he's just he's a got drain. no focus. Yeah, yeah he, you've just put like, all of your power in one piece and he can't do anything except for stand around. So I think he's probably worse than a doom dork. So no, and definitely he's not going to put any fear in your opponent. No one is going to feel the fear there. Yeah, but you can you can actually put the equipment on him so. I think I think Doom Dark is like you can do it, but but it's not helpful. And then these guys like you can't even really put ten equipment on one okay. guy. That's fair enough. Yeah, I think Higher Tech Circle also an example of not really much power when you stack all your equipment. You can do it. You can absolutely give your Cryptech a bunch of equipment, but meh. <laughs> Because you can give them the Tesla Weave, the Phase Shifter, the Devoured Nanoscarabs, or the uh, Quantum Reanimites. There's like the 4-Up Invulnerable plus the... What else? Plus the Mortal Wound Resist. It's like the Field of Pain on Mortal Wounds. Yeah. He's definitely like, you know, like your Cryptek is going to be better than a a Kroot. But if he one-on-ones like the Warrior, he's going to get slayed. Yeah. Uh, the other one that we actually found was the Compendium Necrons have a little bit more juice than that. I would probably definitely above the higher attacks just because you can give your leader a two-up save. Uh, the Starfire Core, which means that if you get a crit, you re-roll, or you take your failed and turn it into a hit. You can give them Tesla Weave so when they do hit the charge, they get the boost. And then you give them the Hyper Phase Blade so that he gets lethal five. So you end up with... <coughs> An immortal leader with 11 wounds, a 2-up save. He can charge, fight, shoot. When he charges in, he can do a little bit of mortal wounds. He's got lethal 5, and he's got a starfire core. Problem with this is you only have 2 APL. So maybe he isn't better than the higher tech circle yeah, just because the that, tech a third circle, APL is rough. Yeah, and they don't like have a way to get an extra APL, right? Yeah, <clears throat> that's Plus, definitely like, true. Plus the Cryptek can synergize with the rest of his team. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, I think that, I think I feel I think pretty good about this. Warp Coven have a fun one just because you can stack a bunch of equipment on, I think you can do it on a Zangor fighter. You can give a Zangor fighter, which normally has a, normally has an auto pistol. You can give it ceaseless on the auto pistol. 
You can give it an extra damage, so it's doing uh, bolt guns worth of damage. You can give him the Gilded Horn, so that you have uh, lethal five some of the time. And then you give it an occult talisman, so anytime we would get a mortal wound or a shooting attack, you have a five up feel no pain. So you just have like a very mediocre Zangor. He's like a pretty stacked goat. He probably... Uh... He's probably better than, than the Hand of the Archon version of this. But not by a whole lot, because he's still two APL. Uh, yeah, and he's like nine wounds, which is pretty good. He has nine wounds now. Yeah, the new buff did turn them into nine wounds. You could also put all of this on the Zangor fight on the Zangor champion, but he already has lethal five, so there's no reason to do that. So this is basically like giving yourself a, a shooting Zangor fighter backup. Just a little, just a little doomsman. Killer Pucks. Volgar, I mean, they've like, got no equipment. They're individual dudes. Will's totally slap, but you can't load them up with equipment, so no doom here. Yeah, I think Strike Force Justian for a similar reason. Uh, there's no doom outside of whatever was on the tin, so no fun to be had there. Yeah, even though like Justian himself obviously would be pretty up there. If, if this was just like, choose a single operative and can they beat people up, it'd be a little bit different, but this is has the equipment point requirements. Yeah, I think the craft worlds got a little bit of doom dooming. They're actually probably better than some of these other doomsmen, just because they have the ability to get are they the three your APL? dire avenger. Uh, they are not three APL natively, but they can kind of work like three APL when you do your strat ploys. So you can move and dash. You can't shoot and fight like your doom guy, which is unfortunate. But you can stack all of your equipment point on a single exarch dire avenger exarch. Give him a reroll extra melee attack or a better melee attack the banner and the plasma grenade so he's probably definitely at the lower end of whatever the doomsman tier is just because he can only do an explosion and then he's got he's got okay he's got okay profiles across the board and he can contest against many operatives uh death guard definitely are one of the teams with a maybe a doom dude right yeah you can stack quite a bit on on death guard and it's natively three APL, and he's pretty chunky and thick. Um, he's yeah, you can give him. In you can give them a nurgling. Territory. The nurgling is like the little stun. You've got the filth sensor, so you can make a bubble of four inch injury bubbles, and then you can upgrade your plague knives to extra damage. So you can have a plague marine fighter with two knives, which are natively rending or natively uh, relentless. Go to four five five attacks on threes, four five relentless, four inch injury bubble, Stunt and people. then you can upgrade the bolt gun and bolt pistols you have to have extra damage. I think. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. So you can solid. get a bolt pistol. Mm -hmm. A bolt pistol, and then two basically relentless four five knives. And can the, the fighter with the knives play. take a bolt pistol? He comes with a bolt pistol. Yeah, I just I just double checked. Nice. And then you can also give him a, a load amount with a crack grenade because filth sensor is three, virulent rounds is one, mephitic toxin is two. That gets you up to nine. And then you either pick a nurgling or the crack grenade. Or the blight grenade, I guess. You know, you can take any one of the other equipments. But he's definitely pretty solid. He can double fight, double shoot, and he's got all the words. And you could theoretically dig him into a position after he's gotten in place. Like if you charge, fight, dig in, then you have a four defense dude sitting in an awkward position um what about blades of cane i don't remember the blades it's, of cane having like, anything particularly fun i think they're probably like here for me just because like you you can you can fully load them and then the individual operative when he's fully loaded is gonna beat up all of these other ones that, but I think that's by the raw strength of his abilities. But yes, you could give an Exarch basically the shrug with the... Well, you you definitely give him the shrug. Yeah, that's like the the one guarantee. And that's then like the rest the of it is really just the like support Talisman stuff. And a plasma grenade are totally fine. But on a Helling Banshee Exarch, you know, who can charge, fight, bonk a dude, flip over them, and then chuck the grenade, that's pretty good. And then you still have, like, the shield. It's just with nine wounds, pretty hard to keep yourself alive. So maybe you're better off just taking an obscuring grenade yeah it's it's not uh the most amazing thing in the world 
but it's you know you can you can fully load him and he could make a play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, uh, and I think well, uh, actually the plays he makes is probably less amazing than the crew. He's probably better than the crew one just by like the raw stats. Like he's also hitting on threes and twos versus on fours for the crew. Super valid. Yeah. The other one that we have is the Ecclesiarchy, so the Sisters of Battle. You can have your leader with a four up invuln, which is already nice. You can give her a heal once a battle. That's four equipment points. Then you can have it be Sister Repentia is the leader. No, Sister Repentia is just a sword girl. Just a purity, yeah. So nothing there. And then you give her a purity seal and a frag grenade. And that gives you, or and a crack grenade. So you can have a crack grenade, a purity seal, which is one CP reroll. You can have file restoration, which is a heal, and a four-up invuln, all in a girl with a three-inch melta pistol and a power sword. Probably put her like upper end of the, the doomsman tier. Yeah, for sure, for sure. She's got a lot of like basically, if you go look at the battle sister superior, she's a crazy combination of abilities. But she's just one girl on a compendium team that can't double fight or double shoot. Yeah. But, um, you know, the, this team does come with just a scratch. So she will tank an insane amount of effort compared to what your opponents probably expect. Because a four up invuln with just a scratch and having all of the some of the strongest guns, I think, as backup definitely do present some issues for a lot of players. Yeah. Yeah, not bad. Um, Phobos is weirdly doesn't make for that amazing of Doomsman. Um, just yeah, you just get like, a Reaver with all the words, right? Yeah, a Reaver that moves fast. Like, he gets there, he bounces, and then he dies. Um, that's pretty much it. Like, you could totally stack the Reaver Sergeant, and maybe he'll, like, kill a thing or two. But, like, in the context of the rest of the team, that's, like, and one of your six models and... He's not doing nearly enough with all that to make it worth it. Um, even though, mm -hmm. like, as an individual, he's going to kind of slap, but not nearly hard enough. Yeah, it's interesting because a lot of the Compendium teams have abilities to make some interesting operatives, and then a lot of the Bespoke teams don't. You don't get to combo off nearly as much. Like, when you go to something like Hunter Clade, there's just really nothing that you can do that boosts the ability any more that I think is worth doing. I'm like, you can give really Mechadendrites and a Servo Skull to a single character, along with pushing your Radium Carbines up to a 3-4 weapon instead of a 2-4 rending weapon. But at the end of the day, you're ba you're barely doing anything for the battlefield capabilities for that operative. Yeah, he's just, like, the same dude that he was, but you're spending a bunch of equipment on some utility, which isn't horrible, but he certainly isn't going to be out here, like, cracking skulls. Yeah, he doesn't suddenly get to do a whole lot more, right? So, like, the best best case for the Hunter Clade is, you know, maybe okay, but it's not any more than he would do without the equipment points. Whereas, like, compared to the Sister Superior, she has the 4-up invuln, and that 4-up invuln is actually doing a lot of work because it has just a scratch backed up behind it. Nemesis Claw, I don't think you can really, like, stack that much because you can't take the flayed skin... And yeah. the trophy and like double grenades doesn't really count. So it's kind of like you can't really stack up a single nemesis claw. Let's see, you could do like the chain snare, the trophy. Yeah, I think, yeah, Night Lord's not really going on. There's not that much going on. I think the legionary for real, like actual legionaries, you can actually doom guy it up a little bit, but not as good as the actual doom guy doom guys. I think because you can't get the P1 better. or anything. This is yeah. bugging out. But it's definitely better than the doomsman because you can have a two up save one time. You can have the reroll when you charge. You can have a four five bolt weapon and you can have a grizzly weapon. Or you can't have all of it all at the same time. But, but I think we were talking options. about specifically a melta gunna doom guy, right? Or the butcher honestly like does it surprisingly well. If you give him the if you, he's Mark of Corn, you give him the Malefic Blade and the trophy, and then he's got his two fighting profiles, and now uh, he doesn't have such blaring weaknesses. 
But the Melta also, because it's, he's got a Melta gun. Yeah, the Melta gun, basically, with a Malefic Blade, a Grizzly Trophy, and Aggression Stimulants, can really just, like, eat himself into the middle of your opponent's area, blow up a dude, and then just kind of hide. Especially, I think you were talking about having a corn specific one. Um, that extra the other king. team that has a bit of a Doom guy, definitely in the Doom dude territory, because he's way better than all these other Doom's men, is the Interrogator Chaplain, or the Interrogator Agent for the Inquisition Agents, because you can stack all of the equipment on one operative. You can give yourself a... Because you have the little tome that follows you around that boosts your number of attacks. Your power knife is a lethal five, uh, hitting on fours, four attacks, three five power sword, basically. Mini power sword. You can give yourself the armored suit, so you can get a four up save. Or you give yourself a four up invuln save. You've got the serval skull, and then you can give yourself a extended auto pistol, so that you can have extra damage for your... Extended stock auto pistol. Does so this, you can be. I mean, it feels a little bit like we need to drag this guy up. Just yeah, on his sure, raw power. Like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's fine. It's probably like that. Yeah, so basically the interrogator operative ends up with. Uh, he ends up with. Four attacks, three, four, I think. Basically, gets a bolt gun. He gets a bolt gun that you have five attacks with. Because you have the floating skull that always comes with you. You've got a power knife, so you've got a little baby power sword. You still only have two APL, which is always going to be one of the minuses for the human side ones. But compared to some of the other toys, he really can be kitted out with a lot of stuff. Um, do talent? Because is it possible to put 10 equipment points on talents? Uh, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, even so think they either. have. And then one of them is like Misericordia, which is like. If someone survives melee with you, like, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could do it. Like, he's probably definitely in the Doom Dork profile because you put a Tanglefoot grenade, Oath Parchment, and then a Psych Out grenade and a Misericordian. You've done it. You've put 10 equipment points, but it, that's, you're really missing the point. And yeah. also, in the process, you give up literally the, the other whole half of the team. Yeah, with the damage that he does to the rest of the team, I think that's... he's. It's technically you can do it, which gets him out of the no doom here thing, but I think it's probably the worst option of like yeah. anything Corsairs, here. Corsairs also don't have a lot of fun stuff with their doom doom list. Uh, I'm not super familiar. Can they even stack? They like can nine, stack or? stuff. It's just not worth it. So you can put four equipment points on the on the psyker and then give him an ocular scanner. And uh, plasma grenade. <laughs> so you can you can do it, but you haven't really done anything. Yeah, um, and then when it comes to the compendium space marines, like you totally can't really stack them up because most of their equipment is like f unique to the different things, and then it's like oath parchments. You can yeah, take, the but hearth you can't can... stack them. Hearth can salvage is also really no doom because all of your equipment are just like flitzing around with equip or how the map looks. You can give yourself like no modifiers to your ballistic skill and a grenade and a plasma knife, but you like there's no like you could do it. So he's definitely a doom dork. It's just, you know, what's the point? Like you can give your Thane the ability to do all of the things, but if you do that, he, does it sabotage no the rest of your team harder than it sabotages talents? Uh, probably not because you have 16 equipment points because you can That's right. yeah. you can bring a couple extra. Chaos Cults, you can do a little bit of a Doom guy. You can give yourself the once a, once a game, just a scratch. You can give yourself the free dash. You can give yourself an invuln. You can give yourself a trophy weapon. So you can give yourself all of the equipment and in the process you have nerfed something else, but your one torment is probably going to be relatively safe because having a 5-up invuln while you're a torment can be pretty nice. Yeah, that, will, that so, will like carry over into the torment, right? Yeah, you keep the four up invuln. You can't get a four up. You can't get a four up invuln with the improved save because it's a different. It's not your like on paper characteristic, but you can have a four up normal and a five up invuln, which is nice. And then you can get free dash during scouting. You get the once once a game just a scratch, and you while you're a devotee, you can have a three four weapon instead of a two three weapon. Yeah, if he gets there, he's going to be doing... He's hanging out pretty well. Like, smack in the middle of Doomsman, I think, is a pretty safe bet. Yep. 
Uh, I think commandos, you can definitely drop all your equipment points, but all of their profiles are a bunch of different pro like melee attacks or like awkward shooting attacks. So definitely at the higher end of Doom Dork, just because they actually can do stuff. But you're not getting any extra APL. I don't think that there's crazy reasons to drop a bunch of stuff, but you could do it all on your knob. So maybe there's the world where your knob with dynamite and uh, sledgehammer and climbing rope and smoke grenade. Maybe there's some juice there. Maybe maybe somewhere in the Doomsman territory. Because you would do it on your knob. And your knob does have 3 APL. And he's got to be better than all the but 2 APL the guys yeah, with like 8 or 9 wounds. Like... Yeah. Maybe right behind the Chaos Cult. Yeah. Uh, and then there's similarly like green skin. The green skin knob fully loaded is not horrible. I think we looked at it and he... You effectively get like a four up save, hitting on fours, and a lot of other stuff. Uh, not yeah, as good as the commandos, just because the base rule is better. Natively three APL. Yeah, make some natively three APL. You get the four up, four up save. You hit on fours, but like, just okay. Yeah. But just a scratch does help a lot for these these and sorts of. They've got the pre nerf people. just a scratch. Yeah, they can still just a scratch anything. Um, I just got a few left. Um, what do you think about Void Dancers? Can you even load them up? You can load them up, but I think when we were talking about it, the load it's up like, is just a, just like a dork. Like You can upgrade your gun profile, so you can have a death mask, which is three equipment points, so that when you die, you get a CP. Definitely not very Doom Guy material. You can like upgrade your Neuro Disruptor right? to have, yeah, to have lethal five. You can upgrade your shuriken pistol so that it has extra damage. So you but go like death really mask. Stack. Hmm. Those don't really you, like you don't have a neuro disruptor and uh, other. No, 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 you don't. But like you could basically upgrade one of your normal weapons, give yourself a death mask and get a psycho crystal. So you can have like the monofilament with reap one or lethal five, or you can have the kiss with an extra damage, so that you have a four seven profile with lethal five neuro disruptor and then a death mask. But, like, there's no reason to do any of that. It's just that your raw operative is powerful, which, you know, gets it a pass over these Doom Dorks. But only only just. And he's 3 APL, so he's got to be better than some of these 2 APL Doom Dork. Yeah, Doom's that's kind of what but, I was thinking, too. But I, I think ultimately, you know, giving yourself a reroll, giving yourself lethal 5, and then giving yourself a boosted melee weapon is, like, it's fine. It's definitely better than, than the Doom Dork, but it's nowhere near as cool as a Doom Dude or the Doom Guys. Yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't and completely I, I, I sabotage expect, you to put expect, all that equipment there. Uh, it's actually not, I think, because Harlequins don't have... Like, you you could give yourself a grenade, but the grenade is kind of whatever. It's just like a bolter grenade. So you could do it, and I think it would be fine. It's just loading up your one operative can be a little bit spooky. And I would still expect it to be probably less good than something like the Blades of Cain Exarchs, because the Blade of Cain Exarchs can double fight, double shoot, and have just a scratch, which I think yeah. is just... A it's better spot to be than. Bounds ahead. Yeah, just having like slightly better weapons, and I think the big problem is if you put on your lead player, so you're hitting on twos, you're actually downgrading your weapon most of the time because you can have a power sword or you can have one of the normal weapons. And sure, there might be reasons to take brutal or rending over or a three seven profile or a four seven profile, but you could just have a five attacks on twos, four six power sword, which is probably going to be more useful most of the time. Um, is he behind the orcs? Uh, probably. I assume the Just a Scratch thing is really doing a lot of heavy lifting for these for these doomsmen that are getting up there. And I'm actually thinking maybe this Blades of Cain Exarch might be might be a little doom dude. He's just kind of a boring doom dude because he's got like no guns or anything. Just like a totally normal base base stat, and yeah, he just happens. Yeah, and it kind of like doesn't to... really. He doesn't um, spark. It doesn't joy. really sabotage the rest of the team that much. Yeah. Like, it's totally valid, I think, to, to like, doom dude your Exarch. It's just, like, yeah. eh. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> yeah. Like, it works, it, it's kind of whatever. I think looking at Imperial Navy Breachers, there's nothing there, because you, you got stims, and you've got door opening, or you give yourself, uh, you know, ignores, APL modifiers, slugs, so you can shoot your shotgun this is, uh, <laughs> at um, long range. I feel like this is one that maxes out at, like, seven. Yeah, you give yourself... Well, you can do... You, you give yourself a crack grenade, a stun grenade, rebreather, and slugs, and stims. 
and cripple your entire team in the process because you go from a seven wound team to an eight like you go from an eight wound team to a seven wound team so it's like gotta be it's just a terrible idea i think it's like it is technically possible but it's worse even than the custodies one yeah um one of the fun ones i think exaction squad gets a little bit of dooming but it doesn't actually boost any of your profiles but it doesn't sabotage your team actively which is nice that sounds like doomsman territory to me yeah you get a reinforced mirror visor so you ignore apl modifiers you get manacles so you can lock someone up you get strobing strobing uh phosphor lumens so people can't reroll against you you pick up a grenade of some sort and that pushes you up to uh, seven points, and then you can give yourself a stun grenade. So, like, it doesn't super sabotage your team, because you still have at least one Phosphor Lumen, and it is now he's got Manacles and all this other random stuff. It's just whether or not putting Manacles on an operative is ever actually going to be anything more than a vibe check in an actual competitive game of Kill Team. Yeah, and, like, does he have the action economy to do all that? No. Yeah. The true, the true issue is that you only have so many APL... <laughs> So dropping bonus actions on one guy, two of them to in fact, probably not the best spot to be. Yeah. Astrakhan also can do a little bit of dooming. Again, not really super inspiring when they do it. They get themselves a foregrip so they don't lose overwatch penalties and they cannot worsen ballistic skills for overwatches. They get a long range scope so that they can get no cover when they randomly roll or when they uh, roll a crit which you know they don't actually have to roll which is nice that's three equipment points give them a shot of adrenaline so they can get killed and get back up and then uh, load them up with a bunch of alternate actions again not the best spot to be i think the i think the alternate actions for me for these two drops them down to dorks just because they yeah, don't really okay have the that. action economy to, to stick with it yeah uh but it's still they're, somehow they're better than like the star striders because they're based at Basically, these two, the Exaction Squad Doom Dorks, are what the Star Striders pay a bunch of equipment points to get to. A perfectly average human stat line. Yeah. Um, Wormblade can also do a Doom Dork. I think you can give one of your Dorks a Climbing Rope, Cult Talisman, so he gets the one extra bonus damage. You get a Spotlight, so you can ignore Obscurity. You get Flash Visors to ignore APL modifiers. You give yourself a Grenade. And bingo, bingo, bongo, you've got a dork with way too many equipment points baked in that is kind of whatever. Does the spotlight require an action? No, the spotlight is good in the sense that if anyone is visible to and within six inches of the person with the spotlight, you block obscurity for them. So there maybe is a world where the cult talisman, spotlight, climbing equipment, big gun, so like the mining laser can run up and like nuke a dude that he couldn't normally. So there might be a little bit of fun stuff to do there just because anyone within six inches of him. And you can't give equipment to the agents, right? Like the you can't give equipment to the agents. That would be, that would be pretty crazy. That'd be big. Dude so guy you... vibes. Yeah. So you get like the, you get like a little bit of the, so I, I, I rescind my previous statement. I would probably put a mining laser with a bunch of equipment points, maybe in the doom min dooms min territory. Because a solo gun, a solo big gun, can run around, block obscurity, and blow people up with a climbing equipment. And you can change one of your normal saves to a crit save when you get shot at. So, maybe he does a little bit more than you were expecting. And you can start him out in hiding, so he pops up in the middle of the board. So, maybe there is, maybe there's something there. The question is, does he survive more than just his one thing? Uh, he might get shot and survive the first time, but definitely not the second time. But the other could, I mean, the, one of the other cool things for Wormblade is you can combo your guy with your leader. So you can like shoot once, blink back into conceal and then show back up the next turn and you can get crit, you can get the rerolls both times. And because you have a big gun when you do it, you get a, a big gun with a suspensor baked in. You actually do get a fair amount of movement with the climbing equipment. So I think maybe on open, there's an argument to be made that... The big scary gun, worm blade, stacked up with equipment might actually be better than some of these other compendium guys. Just because his profile is better and he's got more rerolls baked in. So let's move him past where, even past the crude, I think. He's definitely better than the crutes for, because the crude have a four, four up ballistic skill, which is really what hurts them. Cult agents, at least they hit on fours, but they reroll any of one type 
over two separate turns, and they can slink back to conceal one time a game. So there's maybe enough juice the there. Slink back to conceal definitely helps a lot. Yeah. So I think yeah, <clears throat> I, I could live with that. Yes, yeah, so we could. He could like really be like a, a a threat multiple times throughout the game. I think that makes him a strong contender. Yeah, definitely better than some of these other doomsmen that just like have a bunch of equipment that make them better at stuff, but not like any specific thing enough for it to matter, I think. So in this context, is Chaos Cult's too high? Uh, Chaos Cult has a torment with a shrug and a free dash and an invuln save. No, it maybe it's a little high. There. It could uh, be high, but it's probably lower than the people with multiple game just as scratches, which would be the commandos. So I would probably move him under the two commandos. Just because you only get it once a game for the rosary effect. Yeah, so like that's fine, I think. All right. Uh, we've got Compendium Tau, which I don't have anything. Veteran Guard. I think Veteran Guard had a surprising one. It's not incredible, but you could definitely kind of mini Doom Doom Dork. Doom dork. Or like Doomsman, a guy. You can give them a Hot Shot Capacitor pack. You can give them a rosary and a hand axe and a grenade He's is like, that worth doing um let's see you totally need the reroll initiative thing and i think that's the only thing you'd be missing out on and a crack grenade <laughs> um well yeah oh, but, but you can give yeah you give yourself you give the one dude a crack grenade i think one of the fun things that you can do with this combo is instead of doing the hand axe so I, one of the fun things that one of the guys locally likes to do is he puts the rosary on the hardened veteran and he just survives far more than he should but if you give him a bolter also then he can like shoot okay <coughs> take shots and cover and do a little bit of work but again with a two apl guy you're not really getting that much extra power out of it yeah um and I, you know to just to have him meet the doom requirement he could take the the reroll thing so he doesn't like sabotage the team then he just has to like lurk a little bit and then pop off at the end. I think that puts yeah. him in tie, uh, high dork or low doomsman. Yeah, probably high dork. I don't think he, I don't think I could in good conscience put put this veteran guard with you know a rosary and a hotshot capacitor pack anywhere anywhere in the doomsman territory. Even the hand of the archon guy does more work than that. All right, then we've got scouts. Where are we on scouts? Scouts get camel um, cloaks, yeah, extra you could do blade. Like a cloak, and so it would be your sergeant because he has three APL natively. Yep. Um, you give him the camel cloak so he can retain two. You give him the targeting optics so that he has no cover, which is actually like pretty good. Um, climbing equipment. Um, what is he up it's to fine. with all that? So it's one, three, uh, five. Smoke grenade, frag grenade. That gets you all the way up to 10. So you have no cover on your gun. You've got double retain when you're getting shot at. You've got climbing equipment. You can smoke yourself once with your third APL and you can frag grenade to force people out of into awkward situations. Maybe not the worst. I think, I think there's like something there. It, what else do, does do scouts want? It's like more like every time I've played scouts, I've kind of been like the equipment doesn't none of it is like you 100% definitely need this. So you kind of can, like, get goofy and doomsman him a little bit. I think the extra blades are, like, the good... Extra blades, crack grenade are definitely big ones, and then you take a lot of climbing rope. But, yeah, I mean, it's not super inspiring outside of the crack grenade being, you know, probably necessary, just a crack armor. Go figure. Um, I do think... I honestly do think that <clears throat> this super loaded scout is better than the Phobos Reaver. Okay, yeah. Uh, with the Phobos... Um, hmm. Yeah, because you can shoot twice. He's got no cover built in. You could also... You know, you have the strat ploy to take the dash one time, so there's a little bit of fun stuff that you can do just positionally with him. Yeah, so you can like get a lot of mileage out of him if you like activate him last, double shoot, and then like flip him back and like shoot more and then pop smoke early on the next turn or something. Yeah, I can I, I can live with he might be better than the reaver. 
Uh, the big thing is he doesn't have as many, as many wounds. That would probably be the, the big minus. Yeah, but with, like, you can out-activate people a little bit easier. Plus his, like, st stealth shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you also get to mess around with your opponent's deployment, so you can put him in awkward positions a little bit faster, which is nice. Yeah, and I always say, and, and like, I'm thinking about him in the context of the, the bolt gun. Because the mm -hmm. no cover hitting on two's bolt gun with your scout ambush, I think, is just like straight up better than than reverse shooting. Because the reroll is kind of more like important than the AP. It's probably like pretty close, actually. Yeah, ultimately, I don't think I would. I think out of the doomsman territory, I'd probably tell you to do the sister superior on novitiate or on a uh, sisters of battle before I would say to do the scout <laughs> or the phobos one. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I don't completely hate the Scout one, but it's not ideal. It's not inspiring. He's a doomsman. Yeah, he's just a man. He's just a man. Uh, we talked about Hunter Clade already. We So it's really just the last two teams. It's uh yeah, so Oh, mean, we already talked about these the ones that are like duplicates. I think the Vo yeah we're supposed to switch that one out, and I think the far stalker is this poncho wielding shotgun guy, instead of the crude up there, just because the crude on the top that we have in Doomsman territory that is actually oh that's the compendium one yeah, yeah. that's a compendium one where was it where is he like right there yeah that's good that's good uh, and then yeah the Tal stealth suit definitely goes in the no doom here there's like a strategic choice that's kind of amusing for them but whatever novitiates there's no way I to like load on a stealth suit ah uh, stealth suits being two apl definitely hurts them and only having three of them also hurts them but more specifically none of the equipment does anything fun <laughs> Yeah. There's like a strategic thing that you can do where you can have five <laughs> photon grenades and you just chuck photon grenades and slow down your opponent if they're playing elites because you could do it every turn but that's that's not that's not doomsman territory. That's a the whole different kind of that's a whole different niche. Yep. Uh novitiates can do a version of a doom girl. But it's not it, it, it's, it's actually not bad. Uh at the, at the end of the day you're two APL girl so you will not do as much as some other people but you have the icon of faith so you get a free act of faith that's two you have an adamantium weave so you have a three up save instead of a four up save that's four equipment points auto chastiser gives you ceaseless and then if you accidentally roll another one you take one damage so that's six you can do sainted reliquary so every time you strike with a crit you gain a faith point and then the fun one the one that really makes her maybe the most doomy is you can give her each time this model is activated, roll one d6, and on a six you add one to its APL. So what you can actually do is you can give this to your leader, and one in six chances every game you will have a three APL girl with a power sword, infinite faith dice, and uh, a three up save. Just to, like pop off at it. Well, your leader already has a three up save. Oh yeah, yeah. you can you put this on a, <clears throat> probably like a a per goddess or something. Just go light someone on fire. Yeah, it's that's only like a little bit improved over what they already do. Or yeah, like, yeah, or like, like the, the chapter more. Ecclesiastes thing is is very cute, but I think even if you took all five of them, the inability for you to guarantee when anything is going to happen just makes it not a good choice. Yeah, and then you're kind of like you are kind of sabotaging the rest of the team because you need to have you're absolutely sabotaging the rest of your team in the process. So yeah, yeah. would not would not recommend zero out of ten. Um, do Mandrakes have the potential to stack up? Mandrakes, you can get Super Conceal, oh, no Longer deal. Dashes, Chain Snares. So, kind of like in the range of where Hand of the Archon are, but you get no improvements to any of your aggressive stats. So you're just like a purely positional Doom person with a silent gun. So, like, is that worth 10 equipment points on one dude, or should you just, like, spread it out so, like, multiple people have dashes and multiple people have a uh, shadow weave so that you can hide better yeah. so you probably are just like sabotaging your team uh to make one super mandrake <laughs> so yeah that's probably would not recommend it's probably down yeah it's definitely more of a team where you're <laughs> taking like a shadow weave and an extra dash on one guy and then a shadow weave and an extra dash on another guy and then you're giving the haunting projection maybe you put it on one of those two guys maybe you put it on someone else so that you can spook it 
a mid board objective, but I don't really see a huge reason to go all 10 equipment points because most of them on Mandrakes are very positional rather than being like aggressive pew pews. Yeah. All right. How are we feeling about our doom guy tier list? Yeah. Any final shuffles? I, I mean, I feel like that, that pretty much works for me. Uh, the trend, I think you pretty much have to be three APL to be at the top besides um i mean the warrior obviously the, the real the real secret is uh you know you got to be a marine most of the time <laughs> and double fighting and double shooting is a big part of making a doom guy strategy work yes yeah uh infinite range doesn't hurt either you know having the death spitter on the tyranid warrior and the you know for your favorite doom guy the four attacks on twos four four five lethal five p1 bolter you know being able to tap people anywhere across the map is a big part of having that strategy work. Plus the obs ignore obscuring without having to telegraph yeah. it. Yeah, so like the three that we have up there, you know, the Intercession Sergeant, definitely the best, but right behind them, two other three APL Marines with big damage profiles. Yeah. Well, that's our, uh, that's our Doom Guy tier list. Let us know what you think in the comments. I'm sure... Someone's going to have an argument for something to shuffle. Yeah, and if you guys want to tell us your stories about times that you've tried Doom Guys or Gals, do let us know in the comments of the YouTube channel. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Absolutely. <laughs> Please kill me.